The Battle of Trincomale was fought between a British fleet under Vice Admiral Sir Edward Hughes and a French fleet under the Bailey de Suffren off the coast of Trincomale, then Ceylon, on 3 September 1782. It was the fourth in a series of battles fought between the two fleets off the coast of the Indian subcontinent during the American Revolutionary War. Background France had entered the American Revolutionary War in 1778, and Britain declared war on the Dutch Republic in late 1780 after the Dutch refused to stop trading in military supplies with the French and the Americans. The British had rapidly gained control over most French and Dutch outposts in India when news of these events reached India, spawning the Second Anglo-Mysore War in the process. The French admiral the Bailly de Suffren was dispatched on a mission to provide military assistance to French colonies in India. He arrived in February 1782, and immediately engaged the British fleet of Vice Admiral Sir Edward Hughes in the inconclusive Battle of Sadras. After both fleets spent time in port repairing, refitting, and revitaling, they met again in the April Battle of Providine, south of the Salonese port of Trincomalee that was ended by a storm and then nightfall. Hughes put into Trincomalee, a formerly Dutch port the British had captured in January, for repairs. While Suffren went to the Dutch-controlled port of Batikloa, Suffren and Hughes then met a third time off Negapartum, again with inconclusive results, after which Suffren anchored off Cuddalore to make repairs. Due to the exposed nature of the anchorage at Cuddalore, and the impending arrival of additional British fleets, Suffren decided to attempt the capture of Trincomalee to gain a safe harbour for his fleet where he might effect more substantial repairs to his fleet. Suffren was meeting with Hyde Harali near Cuddalore on 28 July when he learned of the arrival of a French fleet near the southern end of Ceylon. This fleet included two ships of the line, a frigate, and transports carrying 800 troops and their supplies. He immediately sailed for Batikloa, where the two fleets joined forces on 21 August. The next day, after ammunition and supplies were distributed among Suffren's ships, they sailed for Trincomale, where they anchored the same evening. Trincomale captured. On 25 August, after studying the defences, Suffren landed 2,400 men east of the main fortifications. Gun batteries were set up the next day, which then bombarded the fort for three days, until the wall was breached. Captain McDowell, the British commander, was summoned to surrender on 30 August. After negotiations, the fort's garrison surrendered on condition that the French transport it to Madras and allow it to continue service in the war. French troops entered Trincomalee on 1 September. The next day, Hughes' fleet was spotted approaching the port. Naval Battle Following the battle off Negapartum, Hughes had spent two weeks at sea before putting into Madras for repairs. There he was joined by Scepter and San Carlos. Notified by one his scouts that the French were anchored outside Trincomalee, Hughes lifted anchor and made haste to come to the garrison's aid, but arrived one day too late. Suffren, now safe within the harbour, held counsel with his captains. Some of them, led by his second-in-command, had persistently opposed offensive actions against the British, and vigorously renewed their objections to the need for combat. Suffren, after confirming that his fleet outnumbered that of Hughes, argued in favour of action, as the destruction of the British fleet would greatly simplify land operations in pursuit of objectives of the French and the Mysorean allies. He accordingly gave orders to sail out and meet the British fleet. When they exited the harbour Suffren gave the signal to form the battle line. This command, even after being repeated several times, was poorly executed by his recalcitrant subordinates, and only a ragged line was arranged. Frustrated by this insubordination, Suffren then gave orders to hold fire until close quarters and tried to communicate this by firing a gun from his flagship, H.E. Acutaros. 
This shot was misinterpreted by his captains as an order to open fire, and the whole line opened fire on the British fleet, beginning the action. The heaviest action was at the centre of the lines, where Suffren and Hughes again faced off against each other. H. Lecutaros was assisted by a Luster and Ajax, while Hughes, leading from Superb, was assisted by Burford, Sultan, Eagle, Hero, and Monarchar. This lopsided conflict went on for about one hour before Suffren signalled for assistance. Saint Michel and Annibal, commanded by insubordinate captains, stayed away, while Brillant eventually neared the action and gave some assistance. Thirty minutes later Ajax was forced to withdraw with heavy damage and was replaced by Artesian. An hour later the situation became critical when Eros' mainmast came crashing down, and Suffren was forced to scramble to make sure the British did not think that he had struck his colours. He had also run out of ammunition, having fired 1,800 rounds at the British ships, and continued to fire powder alone in an attempt to fool the enemy. Battle on the ends of the line went more in favour of the French. Isis, Worcester, and Monmouth were badly damaged, and Exeter, whose captain was killed in the action, was disabled. At 5.30 p.m., after about three hours of battle, the wind suddenly shifted to the advantage of the French fleet. The ships on the outer ends of their line, which had seen relatively light action, were able to bear on the battle at the centre, bringing a new intensity to the battle. Hero lost her mainmast and mizzenmast, and Worcester lost her main topmast. A number of British ships were disabled before night fell, and darkness ended the battle. Aftermath While accounts differ, it appears likely that Suffren may have attempted to give chase when Hughes drew his fleet off and made for Madras. The French fleet entered Trincomalee Harbour and began working to repair the extensive damage to the fleet. The damage to the British fleet was so severe that land commanders at Madras recalled troops from the field in case the French attempted an attack there. As he had following the Battle of Negapartum, Suffren arrested three of his captains and sent him to Ile de France for punishment for their performance in the battle. This performance was so noteworthy that even the British commented on it. The Calcutta Gazette reported that Suffren was very poorly supported by his subordinates, and one commentator wrote that they were unworthy to serve so great a man. Suffren sailed from Trincomalee on 30 September, arriving at Cuddalore on 4 October. Eleven days later he sailed for winter quarters in Achene, where he arrived on 7 November. Hughes, who did not want to remain in the exposed anchorage of Madras during the monsoon season, sailed for Bombay. His whole fleet suffered through the early days of the monsoon, and some ships took two months to arrive there. The rival fleets, 